Ladies and gentlemen, the presentation is starting. Michael, please go ahead. Thanks, George, and welcome everyone to today's eSeminar event, Tips for Building a uh, Unified Monitoring Platform across Windows, Linux, VMware, and Unix. And today's event is brought to us by Uptime Software. This is Michael Krieger with the Ziff Davis Enterprise. And if you're overwhelmed with watching over multiple server platforms and the applications that run across them, well, you're not alone. It's not a big surprise because monitoring across an integrated environment of VMware, Windows, Linux, and Unix, well, that's a daunting task. And, and no one wants to buy multiple tools to do the same thing, but that's basically what you need to do up to now and with no hope of unified management to track and report real SLA. So what's changed? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Very happy to have with us David Lith, the Senior Technical Product Manager for Uptime, as well as Phil Didaskalou, their uh, CEO. But before we get started, let me remind all of you, these are interactive events. We incorporate all the latest social networking tools, so you can tweet or post information to uh, your favorite social media site or blogging platform, bookmarking site, news site, whatever. Just all right from the console, just scroll along the bottom of the screen and click on the Share This widget. Also, if you have a question uh, for either of our speakers, just hit the Ask a Question button located on your console. We'll get to your uh, live questions, as many as we can, during the event. Uh, and the ones we don't have time for, we'll get a written response afterwards. So go ahead, get your questions in. We'll try and get to as many of them as we can. You can also use the green resources widget to download a copy of the slides to your desktop. And every window you currently see from the slide window to the Q&A window can be enlarged or collapsed. So if you want to change the look and feel of your console, go right ahead. And finally, when we're done, we'd appreciate it if you complete our post-webcast survey to let us know how you like the event. You'll see the link when the event completes in the lower right-hand side of the screen. You'll also see information on a white paper and a free trial uh, that our friends from Uptime are offering. Now, a little bit about our speakers before we begin. Phil Didaskalou, as I mentioned, is their CEO. He's been in high tech for over two decades, spanning roles as an executive and marketing sales for a, a number of companies, including Sun, NCR, AT&T, and IBM in Canada. And his high level of tech expertise combined with his depth and balance and knowledge of IT systems has been a critical factor in the growth of Uptime. I mentioned David Leith is also with us. He's Senior Technical Product Manager for Uptime. And in addition to his deep understanding of IT systems monitoring and management, he's worked closely with customers across the globe in hundreds of data centers, and his expertise crosses all aspects of IT performance, availability, and capacity management. We'll also have a couple of polls today. Uh, so when you hear us announce that poll, if you need to, hold down your control key to disable your pop-up blocker. We'd love for you to participate in all of them. Well, so without any further delay, let's turn it over to our first speaker, Uptime CEO, David Didaskalo. Go ahead, David. Thank you, Michael. And thank you for everyone who's sitting there on this call. I know as IT professionals, you're busy people, and taking even an hour out to uh, learn something is a commitment. So what I'm going to commit to you today is we're going to give you uh, some tips and some knowledge that can help you in building a better mon monitoring platform. And by better, we mean unified. I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means. But first, before I get going, I really would like to uh, emphasize that this is an educational session. And I am going to use some slides that does refer to a product that we build called Uptime. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that it is a world-class unified monitoring platform, and we have thousands of customers across the world using it. But really, the emphasis today is to take some of the knowledge and things we've learned. Uh, between David and myself, you know, we have about 30 years in systems management, and we've learned a lot. And we've done that by really talking to hundreds and hundreds of customers, listening to things that have worked really well, listening to disasters and really keeping in touch with, uh, you know, with organizations and seeing how they progress and improve their monitoring. So um, I hope this is going to be useful for you in your quest. I, I imagine that by the fact that you're sitting on this call, you're looking to do something better. So thanks again for joining us. First thing I'm going to talk about before David really gets into the, some of the specific tips for how to build a better unified monitoring platform, I'm going to talk about uh, what a typical uh, enterprise technology stack looks like for most organizations. Following that, I'm going to define, uh, because you know in IT there's so many acronyms and definitions, I'm going to define what unified monitoring means as a reference, and then I'm going to talk about what are some of the benefits for going unified versus uh, something I'm going to call, talk a little bit about called tool soup. So with that said, I'm going to flip slides here, and you should see a diagram that I hope all of you can see clearly. Uh, what this is about, and the reason I have this slide out here is 
just to kind of highlight what an enterprise looks like. If you look at the bottom of this slide, every organization has hardware platforms with operating systems, and you'll probably recognize some of these. I won't read them all out, but two of the notable ones are the Windows stacks. You know, we've got Linux, you know, various flavors of, um, of Unix OSs, and even uh, you know, VMware is an example of one virtualization platform. Every organization has them. All your mission critical apps and services run on them, so they're important, and they're part of the things you need to monitor. Sitting above that, and you know, imagine sitting inside a hardware server and looking up, you see all your key critical middleware applications. So, for example, we have application and web servers, whether it's WebLogic or WebSphere or Apache or Exchange. These are all the mission critical middleware components that your applications talk to. So they need to be monitored as part of an enterprise uh, unified monitoring strategy. Uh, also in the virtualization area, we've got a variety of virtualization technologies that you're using out there, whether it's VMware or Microsoft's uh, technologies or AAXL PARs or Solera Zones. You know, the world's filled with these, and there's a lot of them that you have to deal with that are important. We also have network infrastructure. You know, no organization is complete from a monitoring standpoint unless you're really talking to all your key network devices and you know, whether they're routers or other kinds of devices that you need to monitor using you know, a plethora of protocols and methods. Moving uh, sort of across in the other barrels, we see our database server stack. Again, part of every mission critical app out there uh, certainly consists of you know, all your enterprise applications will run on these and really they form the core of most applications. And they too are an important part of your monitoring strategy. Above that, we have our business applications. So whether we're talking about CRM or finance or HR, all your end users are using them. They certainly tie into your key infrastructure, and you're going to have to deal with both the end users and the managers responsible for monitoring those. And finally, network storage. Uh, you know, there's a variety of technologies out there, and you know, we've just listed a few here in the barrel, but you'll see that everyone has some flavoring of these. So now when you look above this diagram, up into the top, you see, well, who are the key users of enterprise management information? You know, on the right, we see system administrators, very key. These are the people that have, you know, the trench job of really managing applications, making sure they stay up, making sure you don't run out of capacity, and they're really, really key individuals. Uh, you know, looking more towards the left, we also have IT managers that are other consumers of information that comes out of system management tools. And they typically will focus on things like service levels, making sure the enterprise is meeting what they've committed to the end users in terms of availability for mission critical apps, whether it be email or any of the other business specific applications I mentioned. More and more, what you don't see on this slide um, that we really should talk a little bit about are end users. Uh, certainly with an enterprise management system, more and more organizations are learning the benefits of transparency. And what I mean by that are giving their end users access so they can see for themselves how you're doing. And I can't stress this enough. This is one of those uh, you know, few opportunities that you have as an IT professional to demonstrate the value of IT to the business. And let's face it, IT can sometimes be a thankless, hard job. It's full of challenges. You have constant new technologies being infused into your environment. This is a way that I've seen more and more customers gain points with their end users, whether they're internal or whether they're external clients. So think about the end user and not only monitoring from the inside out, but from the outside in. In other words, they're sitting there in front of a screen, they're buying a widget online. What are they experiencing in terms of delay? Are they waiting? Are they looking at an hourglass? This is really important stuff and it all forms part of a greater unified monitoring strategy. So now that we've talked about some of the uh, uh, enterprise technology stacks, uh, some of the key messages that I want to leave here are in order to truly deliver unified monitoring, you need to touch all of them. You need to be able to think about what are all the critical key points of failure in all this diagram and ask yourself this question. Are we probing it? Are we collecting metrics? Are we saving those metrics so we can perform things like event correlation analysis? This is really, really important stuff. And one thing I'll mention in, the, in a few minutes about tool soup is the problem with a lot of point tools is that you'll only get a small piece of the puzzle. You'll only get limited views, and then you'll have a lot of individualized views that don't really add up to much. So, uh, but I'll get back to that in about a minute. 
moving on from this, the next thing to ask yourself is, well, what is unified monitoring? I mean, I've talked about some technologies and the fact that you need to touch them, but the next question is, what really are the best practices involved in unified enterprise monitoring? Because really, unified monitoring is not about technology, it's about processes and practices. So looking at the top of this circular diagram I have, uh, one key critical one is the ability to see all your technologies from a global perspective. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, have multiple sites where you have servers and applications. You're probably running multiple data centers. Uh, part of uh, you know, best practice is really being able to have one rolled up single global view of how you're doing from a capacity and an availability standpoint across the globe. So whether you're a small enterprise with five servers and five locations or whether you're you know, uh, a large corporate bank that has 10 data centers around the world, you need to be able to do this. And that's, that's kind of as a practice you know, and a question to ask yourself, are you able to do this today? Uh, one of the other ancillary benefits of monitoring all your infrastructure is that you're now going to be enabled to really deliver upon service level management. That is committing to end users, availability of all the critical applications, being able to roll up um, aggregate metrics around your services and applications and see, are we within that 99% availability that we committed to or are we not? So that's one of the key things you should look for in a unified monitoring tool. Uh, we talked a little bit about monitoring uh, all the platforms. I'm still amazed that in this day and age, and it is 2012, how many customers I see that still don't have a single monitoring platform that can actually talk to all the different operating systems. It, it's surprising. I mean, we walk into all kinds of enterprises and they'll have a VMware server tool and they got something else for Windows and something else for Unix. And the problem with that is just the difficulty to administer that it's, it's very onerous. I mean, every point tool you run into will have its own database, will have its own alerting engine. It's going to have its own console. So when problems happen, you have to be a really superhuman person to be able to log into every console and try and correlate and isolate the problems. You need one single unified view of these things. And the technology is there. I'm just still amazed at how many customers I find doing this. Next, outage triage and MTTR reduction. What do we mean by MTTR reduction? Mean time to repair. And really, this is what one of the ultimate goals of any monitoring system is. That is to reduce the time it takes you to find a problem and resolve it. And let's face it, you know, I'd be kidding myself if I said that, hey, all your problems are going to go away if you buy the right tool. That's not the case. Technologies and new applications simply come on too fast to make that a reality. So the truth is, as an IT pro, yeah, you're going to deal with problems. The key is, though, to find the right application that can help you find them faster and resolve them faster. And that's another key reason why you want a unified platform, not point tools. Uh, the ability to jump between consoles again and correlate problems is an absolute nightmare. I'll give you a simple example. Let's say you're running an e-commerce site out there. You're selling product. You got a web server. All of a sudden, end users start complaining that they can't, uh, you know, hit the commit or purchase button. You go in, you log into your web server point tool, and you see that, hey, it's doing, uh, it's doing great. I can't figure out what's going on. All the metrics are healthy. Well, it might be the operating system on one of your platforms that has spun off a thousand processes that has just killed all your CPU and memory. But without a cross-platform tool to see that, you'll be sitting there scratching your head with a point tool. And, or maybe it's network bandwidth. Maybe it's that guy in the corner of your company that just decided to download a petabyte of music and takes down all your network bandwidth. So again, having an integrated tool to see that will really make your life easy. So again, going around the circle, we have VMware monitoring and management. And whether it's VMware or Hyperic or any other virtualization technology, the point is being able to individually talk to these virtual technologies is key. Server consolidation and virtualization. Again, most of you are pretty well advanced in this area, but we always have the opportunities to find out which servers should we consolidate, which applications are best virtualized. The question is, do you have a tool set that can make recommendations for you? The tools are out there. We happen to build a pretty good one that does this, actually, with a, really, uh, a one-click report. Uh, moving further along here, and I'm going to highlight capacity monitoring and reporting. Guys, this is a really, really key one. This is where money gets spent, and I mean a lot of money, every year. And we talk to so many customers that sometimes over-provision capacity. 
when they don't need it because they really don't know what their problems are. Like they're stuffing more CPUs in boxes, trying to make apps run faster that maybe aren't multi-threaded to begin with. So again, having a tool that can figure out, hey, am I really having a hardware problem? Am I really having an application problem is key. But capacity reporting and management is really important. This is when you go to your CIO every year and ask him for more money. He's going to want justification. Do you have a tool that can show you at a micro level or at a macro level what you're actually using, what the trend is? That'll help, that'll help you get the dollars that you want from your CIO and help really help you run a more efficient operation. So other things, application monitoring and application transaction uh, monitoring. This is where you start getting into being able to improve the end user experience by, by really, uh, whether it's synthetically or in real time, logging into your apps and replicating what your end user is experiencing, you can truly round out your enterprise monitoring strategy. And all this is about improving service levels. So talk a little bit of, here on this slide about what unified enterprise monitoring is all about. I'm going to jump to another slide here so we can talk just a little bit about uh, you know, again, and kind of rehash what some of the key benefits are. You know, looking at this stack here, uh, without getting into specific technologies, you can break down any enterprise on these levels. Again, network, servers, virtualization of those servers, applications, and ultimately business services. And, you know, I can't say enough, the problems that you will run into if you continually buy those three and those 5K point tools to monitor individual layers of this stack that's all fine and dandy, but those point tools don't share data. They have different databases. They have different ways of alerting you. Even worse, you need different expertise for every point tool. You know, I've seen organizations with more than 20 or 30, and no one person knows how they all work. So then you run into a human resource problem when you have such a point tool strategy. Really start thinking about and looking for uh, tools that will give you an integrated view of the environment. And you know, as I click, oops, sorry, I uh, accidentally, uh, can we go back to a previous slide, please? Uh, and while that's happening, um, what I'll talk about is, uh, sorry, I'm just waiting here for my screen to refresh, um, unified dashboards. Once you have a unified monitoring tool and you can see dashboards from all views. You can do two key things, and that's improve efficiency and improve your enterprise service levels. And that's really, really what unified monitoring is all about. Uh, I'm sorry about the, uh, so the slides jumping back and forth here. Uh, here. You want me to land you on that right one? Is that where you want to be? There. Yeah. Mike, sit if you still could just, a minute. Just sit still a minute. I'll get you there. Yeah, okay. There we go. No problem. Well, while we're doing this, you know, again, to talk a little bit about the key benefits. So improving efficiency. The one way you can do this is by eliminating the duplication and configuration of these tools. Not only is it hard from a, you know, a, a multiple point tool to manage and administer them, but you literally need to deal with multiple vendors that all have different licensing strategies. So you're going to waste time and money just managing your management tools, which kind of mm -hmm. defeats the point. Uh, the other thing that you're going to really, really save time on, and that's the reduction of analysis time. As I said, having a unified tool that can help you figure out, hey, is it a server problem, is it a network problem, a storage or an app, is going to save you time uh, over and over again and ultimately let you do what the most important thing is, and that's increase your enterprise service levels. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, are, are bonus based on SLAs. And being able to keep those services, uh, you know, up and running and the levels that they should be is really, really critical. So, so I'll tell you what, Phil, why don't we jump in and put our audience to work and ask them what state they're currently in in terms of their monitoring. So we're going to put idea. a polling question out there. Everyone hold down your control keys if you need to because we want to know, are you already at unified monitoring and looking at this event today to see how you compare to other people out there? Um, are you in the tool soup phase where you've got all of those out there and God knows I've dealt with that myself in the past, no great joy, or uh, do you have no monitoring tools at all? And uh, while uh, you take a moment to respond to that, um, so l let me ask you, Phil, I mean, are there guys out there, do you see a lot of people who don't have anything at all in this day and age? Generally, we, you see, uh, yeah, go ahead. 
No, we absolutely do. And actually, uh, it wasn't more than a couple months ago when I did um, you know, a similar webinar on a different topic actually called smart monitoring. And I uh -huh. did ask this question, and I was surprised that 22% of the respondents said they really had no monitoring tools. And I, I sort of qualify that a little bit to also interpret people that maybe have bought monitoring tools that have become shelfware. Uh, mm -hmm. For a number of reasons, you know, they may have bought like a big four framework solution that's too complex to use, where they haven't had the training. It's just impractical for that size of organization. Or it could just be that people have left and due to a lack of expertise, the tools that they have. But yeah, I was really surprised to see how many organize like 22% to not have any tools, like life must be uh, less than pleasant. Well, I'm telling you that our attendees are twice as smart as yours because um, we've only got about 12% of our attendees who have no tools today. <laughs> hey, great job, guys. And honestly, I'm glad to see that because if you have no monitoring tools, you're kind of in the caveman end of the cycle. But for those of you that are there, it's you know, like, you know, it, it, it's, I mean, it's a reality and you have to deal with it. I, I was just talking to a very large retail chain with thousands of stores that has no monitoring tools, so don't be uh, ashamed. And the good news is there's a lot of really great technologies out there that can get you there. You don't have to spend a million dollars today to have enterprise, you know, unified monitoring. So then, so, um, yeah, we've got four out of five who either have no tools at all or are suffering with tool soup. Why don't I move on to the next slide, and um, you can uh, take it for there. It's Go ahead. Absolutely. Now, let me pass the things over to David Leith. Uh, David's been with us again for uh, almost 10 years, knows a lot more about system management and how to implement it in real life. So over to you, Dave, and uh, help us give our viewers uh, you know, a few tips on, on where to go from here. All right. Thank you very much, Phil, and thank you, everybody, for attending today. Uh, sorry about some of the slide issues there. Um, so I'm going to talk today a, a little bit uh, in more depth about some of the things that Phil's touched on already. You know, I, I come into this webinar and you know, it's, it's kind of great to see or, or uh, confirm that a lot of you are kind of halfway through this process, right? So you either have no monitoring place at all or you have some collection of, of various tools. So what I'm going to talk about is some of the key things you need to look for in a tool and sort of the next steps to get yourself from that tool soup point of view you into a unified monitoring solution, and then also talk about some of the common gotchas along the way, right? Because I, I know I've talked to many, many users um, where it is very, very difficult to, to get away from that tool suit mentality and get to that single unified view uh, of the environment. So the first few slides, I'm going to talk about specific things to, to look for in that tool. So Phil's already talked a little bit about the, the business service level views. You know, this is absolutely essential to any true monitoring uh, tool in your environment. So certainly if you have tool soup, you know, the number one complaint that we hear at the kind of the management and director level is that they just can't get that one view of what is the actual status and health of my environment. All right, so building up these service uh, business level views can, can be a little bit complicated, right? So the, the first thing that you need to overcome, of course, is recognizing that you do actually need that view, right? So there's a lot of large data centers out there that, frankly, are very convinced that they can continue operating with that tool soup and continue happily with their point tools to, to deal with each individual section of the data center, each individual silo. But at the end of the day, that really doesn't help move IT forward as a business. Right, so you need to be able to put together these crafted views to give that, that single view of status in the environment. And the most important thing about these views is that they really, really need to be flexible. Right? So a lot of tools out there have sort of standardized dashboards, but many of them that we deal with are very, very focused on the sysadmin or the, the network admin or the DBA being point tools. Right, what you really need to ask along this process is, well, we've got dashboards. Who do these dashboards actually need to be for? Right, and the, the answer should be at the end of the day, well, these dashboards should be for the actual consumers of your IT services, right? So does your tooling today allow you to customize a dashboard that is, let's say, public ready, right? So is it in a format that a standard, let's say, a line of business user could come by and look at this and say, yes, the, the services that are essential to me are up right now. No, I don't need to call IT and complain about a problem. 
right? And I think you'll find that many of the dashboarding solutions out there just don't allow that, right? They don't allow that flexibility to roll up status and build crafted views for individual teams of users. And from that, work backwards to say, okay, well, we have the most high-level view possible, ready for the end user, the consumer of IT. Let's go one step deeper. Do we have another view that is appropriate for the specific teams, right? So we do, do we have the network view? Do we have the server view, the VMware view? Right? Many, many tools can't deliver one set of dashboards that cover all of that or give you the flexibility to, to create your own dashboards. Another key question about producing these business level views right, is what kind of information can we integrate that isn't just related to IT? Right? So can we actually take third-party data and display that alongside our IT status in a single dashboard? Right? So maybe there's other applications or other tools within, uh, within your business that you need to put up that information alongside your IT status information. A key component for dashboards is the ability to do that. Right, so a key question to ask yourself, are your dashboards public ready? Right? Are they actually adding value to the end user of your, uh, your IT applications, or are they just adding value for the, the IT team itself? Right, and just a few little screenshots of kind of example views. Right? So we talk about rolling up the, the business service. On the right, we have application status, which is really just the health at a high level of different grouped applications uh, in the environment. In this case, we, we've grouped things in more of a technology way, so email infrastructure, web, uh, web sphere environment. Right? Maybe you want to group things into region, right? so are the applications in, uh, in Europe alive, uh, northern states, eastern states alive, uh, or maybe line of business, right? so does the marketing team have all the tools that they have to send out email reminders to people and set up webinars? Right, key things that you can put into a, into a dashboard. Right, and just another view of that same info diced up the other way. Another key thing to look for in the, in the unified tool, and, and we hear this all the time, is this question about the depth of metrics. You know, what's actually needed? Right, so the, the first thing to remember is that you, you have to have metrics that cover the whole environment. Right? So we've talked about bringing in the storage, the database levels, right, all of that stuff. Right? Many, many people become very tied to their specific point tools. Right? So if they have a, you know, a Linux tool, they get very, very tied to the Linux tool. And the number one excuse we hear is, well, it has all the metrics that we want. Right? And uh, it's always kind of uh, interesting to look at that and say, okay, well, how many of the metrics there actually get used on a day-to-day -day basis, right? How many of the metrics that the point tool provides are actually meaningful to help resolve a, a real problem in the environment? Or do they just sit there more or less for a comfort factor, right? So finding the right balance in the, the depth of the metrics you need can be very, very tricky, right? But I definitely think that you need to look at the, the different silos in your environment and ask the basic questions. Do we have the right metrics from all the different silos? Right on the server side, do we have a view of the, the hardware performance, the OS performance, application performance, and end user experience? From the network side, do we have the idea about bandwidth, the availability of switches, and any transactional problems that are going on? Right, database side, is, are there any problems going on in the database system? Right, many of the metrics that actually allow for effective planning are very, very basic metrics, right? So most of the time you can get away with, so let's say sort of the 80% rule on, you know, 80% of the metrics will get us uh, very, very far along the path without needing all of the depth that, uh, that TruePoint tools will generally give you. Another key thing about the, the depth of metrics and the, the metrics in general is that you need to have a standardized graphing engine and a standardized way to share that graphing uh, performance information between teams. Right, so for example, if you wanted to do a deep dive diagnostic on a, a Linux system right, and you're looking at the network interface bandwidth on a specific system, you'd want a way to customize that graph to suit the format that works for you and then from that graphing utility be able to send that across to the network team to really look at that problem, right, to help you get to the root cause of some sort of performance issue in the environment. And let me remind everyone, you could submit your questions at any time. We've got a bunch in the queue already, but uh, we'll get to as many of them as we can when we're done with the presentation. Go ahead, David. Oh, perfect. That's great to hear. The next thing to look for is all about that availability monitoring. And Phil hit on this a little bit earlier in the presentation. Right, but here, here's where you start to run into some key gotchas in this process of going from the, the point tools to the unified monitoring platform. 
right? So do you have availability monitoring across all of your technologies in different teams, right? And why do you need that, right? And it all comes down to that correlation and root cause, right? So any production application these days touches every single portion of, uh, of the data center, all the different teams. We run into a lot of users who, because they don't have that centralized availability monitoring, there's no way that they can correlate events going on in their environment. Right, so I think the example was given earlier of a website going offline. Do you really know if that's a network problem or a, or a database problem or a server problem? If you have individual tools looking at each of those silos, you'll never be able to tell from one view where that actual problem is, where's the root cause. Right? And most importantly, you know, if you don't have this correlation engine, what you end up doing is wasting a lot of time chasing down problems that you could have a tool do for you. Right, so if you're not sure whether it's a network problem or not, you're going to go to the network team and say, hey, go investigate this. They'll end up investigating it, spend a lot of time on it, go back to the server team and say, nope, it's a server problem. Server team will look at it and say, nope, looks like it's a database problem. At the end of the day, the, that ends up taking a lot of time, right, and really results in longer outages and far more failures in service, right? You want to be improving your MTTR instead of pointing fingers around your data center. We call that a blame storm. Yes, the blame storm, absolutely. Right? We, we call it the sea of red. Right? So if a, if a core switch goes down in your environment, mm -hmm. you, know, you definitely want just the switch team to be alerted, and you don't want to absolutely. see a dashboard that's filled with 1,000 red alerts. Sure. Right. The last piece around availability monitoring, uh, and this is a, a common gotcha, is this idea of self-healing. Right? One of the key things that you're just not able to do with those point tools is do very complicated self-healing of the environment. Right, so um, Uptime particularly provides an engine where you're able to automatically restart or trigger recovery actions across an array of different uh, technologies and different uh, types of elements. Right? So if you do have an application that is spread across many different physical servers, many different network segments, you have to ask, you know, to improve MTTR, what you really want is an automated response to any of these problems. You know, email alerts are fine, SMS, pager alerts are great, but what you really want is something that will go out and solve that problem for you. Right? And the real way to solve problems in most outages these days is to, again, look at all of those different silos, figure out where the root cause is, and trigger some sort of recover action, recovery action to uh, get around that problem. If you're using point tools, often you'll find that you just can't get that cross-view uh, and cross-recovery. The last piece, uh, or second last piece you want to look for is, uh, again, around the capacity management side. All right, and capacity management should be a very simple problem. Really, it comes down to three questions. What do I have? What am I using? And when will I run out? All right, there are many, many tools out there that do very, very heavy capacity planning, capacity management to try to determine you know, what, what's going to happen in the future. But the reality is nobody really knows what's going to happen in the future. You can do a best guess. But your best, uh, best tool to figure out whether you have a capacity problem or not is to look at what's going on today and just very simply understand that total uh, capacity that's available. Are you using it? And uh, what's the trend on that uh, capacity? And help you figure out when you're going to run out. Now, as soon as you start moving into the unified monitoring world, there's a key question that comes up, and often it's overlooked until very late in the evaluation uh, scheme of things. So we call it apples to apples. All right, so capacity management, you want to be working with a, a metric that can be somewhat uh, similar across different technologies. All right, so a great one would be CPU usage. Right? If you have many different architectures in your environment, it can be nearly impossible to compare CPU usage uh, across different areas. Right? So a great example I'm going to pull up here would be comparing the architecture of uh, an HP box or any titanium chip to a standard x86 uh, machine. It's going to be very, very difficult, or a, you know, a Spark uh, CPU. What you want to be able to arrive at is, a, is an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of what's the real horsepower of those different servers and which ones are, uh, are actually performing badly. Right, so in this example graph that I've pulled up, we have this idea of what we call a power unit, where we've just been able to standardize the, the different architectures into one capacity number and to use that for capacity planning. And the same can be said for network devices, uh, databases. Right? You need that single unified number that you can use to make real capacity decisions across different technology silos. 
Now, how to move to unified monitoring. There, there's a few pieces here that I just want to talk about quickly, right? So how do you get from A to B, right? How do you go from your current tool soup environment to a unified platform? And the, the number one thing that we hear from users is, is all about trust, right? I actually heard this uh, yesterday in a, a client meeting, right? Their, their number one challenge with building a unified platform is that they could never trust the metrics, right, that were coming from the unified tool, right? So each team individually was so attached to the, the metrics coming out of their, you know, their network tools, their database tools, their server tools, that they couldn't be convinced that anybody else's numbers were the right numbers. Right, so moving to a unified platform, it's essential to build out that trust. Right, so how do you do that? Right, one of the best things that, uh, that we've seen is this idea of concurrent monitoring. Right, so if you have ToolSoup in place today, set up a unified platform to run side by side for three months or six months, and just do a comparison. Right, so are the metrics coming out the same? Right, are they close enough that you can make real decisions? And you can also use that to start demonstrating that the accuracy and the value of having the single view of, uh, of the environment and the single unified tool. Right. By doing that side-by-side -side comparison, you can also start to prove out the, the efficiency and improvement of that tooling. All right, so you can start to look at things you know, like mean time to repair. How have we actually improved our service delivery over the last six months? do a report that shows that and then compare it to the, the information coming out of your point tools and you should be able to prove some real value uh, to, the, to the line of business users and the end users of your application. Now another big mi migration tip is all around uh, porting existing configurations, right? particularly from organizations that are using a, you know, Nagios uh, or some sort of open source uh, software. A big question that comes up is, all right, well, I've put all this work into my own, uh, my own tooling. Maybe I've built my monitoring solution all by myself. Right? You want to find a tool where you're able to take those existing scripts and just directly port them over. Right? And also find a tool where the configurations that are in place in, in your existing tooling can again be ported over either via an API or some sort of uh, mass import script. Those things, those little, let's call them technology hiccups, they can save hundreds and hundreds of hours on making a, a migration to a new unified tool. I think we're going to go to a, uh, a second poll question now. I think we should do that indeed. Why don't you hold down your control keys out there in audience land if you need to, because we are going to ask you, are you able to see the overall health of your data center? So let us know whether you're one of the few who has no monitoring, whether you've got a collection of different views with no single view, a smaller set of tools that covers most of the enterprise, or do you have that single dashboard covering everything? And, um, you know, it, it's interesting when you take a look at the way that um, our, our enterprises become more and more integrated. I think, you know, we have to either thank or blame virtual machines and uh, virtualization and uh, the move to private cloud architectures to really, um, you know, fostering this throughout the enterprise. I think long gone are the days of uh, silos. Now we have applications and, and operating systems, some of them legacy, all sharing even in some cases the same physical data store. So it's, it's interesting to see the impact that has on, uh, on enterprises like that. So let's take a look at the results of our poll. And uh, here they are. Looks like the number one answer is, ah, I'm in the soup followed by uh, not so much in the soup, and again, a uh, single dashboard to cover the entire enterprise. Uh, less than 12% of our attendees say that's where they are. Um, David, does this surprise you in any way? No, it doesn't surprise me. It's, it's pretty much in line with the, the uh, first polling question. What jumps out at me, though, is actually the, the single dashboard uh, to cover mm -hmm. the entire enterprise question, because I believe that the, the earlier answer, we had about 17% using a unified tool, but only 11% are saying they believe that they're able to get that single dashboard. So there's unified, unified and there's result, unified, uh, right? Yeah. yeah the, it's a, a different uh, stance on the unified view. So. Right, or having the tool is one thing, getting, to, getting it to uh, be that single dashboard to cover everything in the price is something completely else. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's, let's let you move on right now. All right. Uh, I have wrapped up my bit. I'm actually going to pass back to Phil now. One second. Thanks, David. And thank you all for uh, following along with us so far. Now, I want to say something here because I know some of you are sitting there thinking, Phil, Dave, hey, that's great, and uh, we, you know, we'd love to get to a unified monitoring platform, but we made quite an investment in all of our point tools. And by the way, I'm not sure I believe you that we can go completely to one tool set. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, 
the point here in moving to a unified monitoring platform is not to have one tool. Uh, you know, the reality is you'll never get enough, enough depth to find every single problem you're going to encounter. You know, let's look at an example. You know, you build your unified monitoring platform. One day you experience latency, so you figure out it's not your network. Uh, you know, you have more than enough storage. It's not your capacity. But through really drilling down through your server process list, uh, for example, Uptime has a top 10, uh, you know, process list that consumes, uh, you know, memory and CPU on a box, you figure out it is a process related to an application. And then once you go even deeper, you figure out, hey, you know what? The way we coded this homegrown app is not very good. Uh, we need to now go inside the code. Well, uh, you know, a lot of general monitoring tools aren't going to help you with that. So you go and you buy a specialty product that can then help you optimize the code that you've written. You know, and this might appear in various areas, whether it's on the networking side or, uh, you know, for example, our tool allows you to monitor 30, 40 different Oracle metrics, but there's 10,000 of them. And there's some really good Oracle monitoring tools out there. So the point here is you can get to a tool set that will unify your monitoring and give you, you know, for 90% of the events you're going to come across, it's great. And you use that as a springboard or a jumping platform to then go into a specialty tool. So the point here being you're never going to just have one tool, but you should have one general unified monitoring platform uh, with the addition of some great, very specialty tools out there to complete uh, you know, the analysis of every problem that you're going to run into. So with that said, uh, moving on here to our final slide, uh, we would, you know, we, we hope, A, that you found this somewhat interesting and in giving you some thoughts uh, to move further and uh, progression towards your unified monitoring platform because I see based on the stats that uh, only 11% of you are there and the good news is you have a real opportunity to get there uh, with a lot of good tools out there. I mean, we think we have a great one, which is why I do want to offer you a free 30-day concept of uptime. And again, as mentioned on the resource bar, uh, right to the left side of your screen or below, if you click on the green tab, you'll have immediate access to uptime if you want to grab it today and download it or read some white papers, and we have some other great resources there. Uh, I, I give you my uh, guarantee as CEO of the company that you will get unified monitoring with uptime. Uh, we're very proud of what we built. And as I said, we have thousands of com companies and enterprises in all shapes and sizes uh, that use uptime every day. So uh, we're happy to also get any feedback that you have. I know we've seen a lot of questions coming through. And um, I know we've got a bit of time left here today, so we'd love to maybe take on some of those at this point. Um, well, that would so be awesome. And um, I'd like to thank you, da uh, David and Phil. Great presentation. Lots of great information in there, and it's interesting to see the evolution of the way we monitor in the whole ITSM space. Uh, just uh, on that note, let me also remind you before we go to the questions that one of the things that you can download is an ITSM vendor comparison checklist that Uptime has been so kind to, uh, to include in, their, uh, in the additional resources we have today. So let's get right to it. Keep your questions coming. We'll get to as many of them as we can in the time remaining. This one comes from Aaron, and Aaron wants to know, can your product monitor best in APC UPSs or climate monitoring? We have Weather Goose 2 climate monitors that can do SNMP traps. We have a Kohler 30 kilowatt gas generator. Can, uh, how about that? Is it outside the data center too? Is it the, the whole infrastructure that we monitor? David, Phil? Hey, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we just had a technical dif difficulty in the switch over here. Could you repeat that question? <laughs> Absolutely. Aaron wants to know whether your product can monitor best in APC UPSs or climate monitoring solutions like a Weather Goose climate monitor that does SNMP traps. And uh, he says they also have a, a gas generator wondering, what of that emergency in infrastructure can you support? Uh, anything with a with an SNMP interface, so any of those uh, climate type devices that are going to be either pulled for SNMP information or produce SNMP traps, we can absolutely monitor with uptime. Perfect, great to hear that. This one comes from Jerry, and Jerry wants to know: Does your product require Active Direct uh, Active Directory to be in place for Windows uh, servers, or will it work in a work group environment for those of us who are AD averse? 
Uh, no, it doesn't require uh, Active Directory um, for any of the monitoring. Um, we do have specific Active Directory performance checks, so uh, measuring mm -hmm. the number of authentications per minute, delay on authentication, that type of uh, information, as well as user account sync. Um, but by no means does uh, AD have to exist for uptime to function. Terrific. Keep the questions coming. Uh, boy, we've got like 30 in the queue. Hopefully we can get through them all. This one from Aaron who wants to know, can your tool monitor legacy like non-VOIP uh, PBX telephone switches like uh, an old Siemens running Unixware 7? Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, again, anything that's uh, SNMP enabled um, or can have a net SNMP agent installed on it, uh, we can monitor. I'll have to look at the particulars for that model, but uh, we should okay, be able to. Terrific. And, um, yeah, if you like, we'll uh, send you that uh, attendee's contact information so you can get back to them directly. Chris Booth wants to know, how can your tool set be utilized to establish automation? Uh, that's a great question, and it's actually pretty broad. Um, so. Um, Uptime has a, a number of different automation capabilities, particularly in that, that self-healing arena, right? So we, mm -hmm. we have a number of um, kind of canned scripts or options to trigger different types of recovery actions on, on different technologies. So great examples would be um, in, the, in the VMware environment, you know, rolling out new VMs, uh, rebooting VMs, um, you know, stopping them, migrating them on simple OS stuff, right? Uh, restarting services on Linux and Windows, um, you know, all of those types of tasks can be absolutely automated. Uh, and, and the whole engine is actually completely open. So anything that, uh, that you can script, uh, uptime can execute, right? So that opens you up to any, uh, any automation option that you're interested in. We do also have an API that can be used for integrations as well, which helps lead towards the, the automation of tasks in general. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Here's a question from Patrick who wants to know whether Uptime is the only product in the market that can do multi-platform monitoring. Uh, good question, Patrick, and uh, we think uptime is an excellent one in the arena, but uh, the answer is, is no. There, there are some, and perhaps I'll stratify, you know, the answer a little bit, you know, depending on your budget. I, I mean, if you want to go out and buy what we call a big four framework from the big four, which, you know, like HP OpenView or BMC Patrol or a Tivoli, um, you know, you certainly can do that. You know, if you have a budget north of a million, say one to three million dollars, and you want to go and go full hog and deploy all the capabilities, uh, you know, you can do that. I would say based on the number of customers we've run into that have uh, re replaced those for a number of reasons because they do end up being rather complex and not the easiest tool sets to operate, I'd probably say out of them, IBM Tivoli is probably the one that uh, I'd you know, I'd, I'd, I'd steer towards if you want to go for a big, expensive type of platform. But again, you know, you look at the 80-20 uh, rule and you go, you don't really need a lot of the capabilities in the big four framework. I mean, you know, for the money that you're going to spend with tools like Uptime and others, you can get way further ahead. So we think in our space, uh, you know, being a, you know, giving you 90% of what you would get with those kinds of tools at a fraction of the price, uh, you're a lot better off. Other options, too, uh, you know, to talk about is, you know, depending on where you're at, you can also get much more basic depth uh, if you look at perhaps even a freeware type of solution or a GFI or a WhatsApp Gold. You know, again, you're not going to get the depth of metrics you will out of uptime, but you can get a unified type of monitoring in the sense that mm -hmm. you can talk to servers, you can talk to network devices and applications, and kind of grow into a, a more sophisticated solution like uptime. Okay, thanks for that. Here's a question from Nick. He has a couple of questions in the queue. He wants to know, um, he says, uh, he wants, interested to see how the monitoring deals with the various vendor virtualization technologies. Like, you know, we have the containers like Solaris Zones, and IBM has LPARs, and then we have, you know, the, the uh, uh, x86, um, uh, like VMware, et cetera. That, that's a great question, and certainly, as you know, as you know, and you've pointed out, you know, just about every Unix vendor, uh, you know, variations of Linux and Windows. I mean, they all have virtualization platforms. Uh, if the question is related to uptime, I can tell you that yes, we do talk and we do support uh, very directly monitoring of uh, LPARs, LDOM, Solaris containers, 
uh, you know, VMware and just about everything in the stack. And, and it is important that you get that because more and more apps are being pushed out into virtual platforms and, and actually mm -hmm. even out into the cloud. So whether you're running, uh, you know, services out, uh, you know, in a private or public cloud, you want to be able to monitor those too. So, uh, yes, the answer is we do support those technologies. And uh, keep the questions coming. Uh, we'll get to as many of them as we can in the time remaining. Here's another one from Nick. He's also looking for integration into HP Service Manager, and he says integration shouldn't only be for ticketing, but also reconciliation and collation, for example. Uh, that's an interesting question. So we, we can absolutely integrate with any sort of ticketing tools. So in some of those actions uh, that I talked about for uptime taking in the event of, a, of an outage. Uh, we can certainly forward information about that outage, including you know, topology uh, information over to a ticketing system. Right? Um, the information is then available in that ticketing system. Um, the, the remediation side is something we're working on, but uh, absolutely um, all the information about the outages and the, the affected hosts can be passed back and forth between a ticketing system. Okay, that makes sense, and uh, good to know that you can get that service ticket issued if you need to. Keep the questions coming. This one from Gerard who says, is the solution available for service providers, or is this just an unuser product? Excellent question. Uh, this is Phil. Absolutely, we have uh, customers of all shapes and sizes. So whether you're an IT organization monitoring internal applications or service or providers, you can absolutely use uptime for that, uh, simply because we allow multiple uh, points of access or the ability to have different classes of users uh, log in and uh, get their information. We can also push out specialty reports to end users through portalization. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really flexible that way. So we've got all kinds of service providers uh, that deploy out time today. And um, just as you can specialize all of that, uh, we have a lot of very specialized questions coming in. A lot of people really interested in seeing how this would work in their particular environment, which is great to see. So uh, another one from Nick who says, I also want to see capabilities in terms of like defining a normal range, normal ranges for operation rather than just, you know, broken or not broken. So is there uh, some way to do that, set up ranges? Uh, the uptime thresholding engine does have complete uh, customizability in terms of being able to alert on, let's say, uh, a normal warning type range uh, for, mm -hmm. for any of the metrics that are coming back. So whether it's too too many or too few, you can get that no problem. Yep, absolutely. You can do complex uh, combinations as well. So alerting if something is outside of a normal operational band, right? So if your CPU mm -hmm. should be between 40 and 60 percent, if you go below that or over that, uh, uptime can trigger an alert on either end of it. So here's Bertrand asking flat out, how does this compare to Tivoli? Uh, this is Phil. Good question. Well, I can tell you one thing. It's a lot easier to use, and you can configure this in a matter of minutes or hours, not days or months. Uh, the only reason I say that is I've, I've dealt with so many customers that use Tivoli, and it literally, in some cases, even though it's very powerful, in some cases, it, it, you know, it's like one of those tools that was built by rocket scientists for rocket scientists. Mm -hmm. so if you have the time and the energy to take lots of training, uh, you know, you can deal with some rather long deployments. Um, I would say Tivoli is a good, solid, very deep solution. Uh, it, it's just more of a question of practicality. Are you willing to commit the time, the resources, and the dollars uh, to deal with it? And then also deal with uh, the knowledge base in your company, potentially. Like what I mean by that is people leaving after six months, and there goes all right. your knowledge. So we think uptime is a far more agile, uh, easy to deploy solution. I mean, I mean, I can install it in six minutes and start monitoring. So, uh, to give the user that asked the question an example, uh, uptime has been deployed to over three or four hundred servers in a matter of a day. That's about the rate that you can roll out uh, very quickly and you know be up and running. Uh, I, I can't say the same for Fertility. It's a bit of a beast. Um, I, I will say I've even had IBM call us in the past and explore uptime to see if it might be a fit for some of their lighter customers where Tivoli is just too heavy. Got it. Uh, th that's great to hear that. Keep the questions coming. Aaron asks, does your product integrate with ERP packages? We use InfraSX Enterprise 6.0, which runs on top of a Progress Open Edge database. So here looking for integration with their Enterprise Resource Planning app. 
Uh, it, it depends on the nature of the integration. You know, certainly from a, a monitoring point of view, so the ability to monitor the performance and availability of every component of that application, right? So monitor mm -hmm. the databases, monitor the web front end, uh, you know, simulate a user login to the, the web uh, services. You know, Uptime can do all of that. Uh, we can also pull application-specific metrics, right, from, uh, from that application. So an ERP would be you know, number of sales per hour, something like that. Um, you know, a, a custom monitor can be built to pull out those business or custom application metrics, and they would fall in line with every other metric that Uptime is able to report and graph on. Okay, keep those questions coming. Um, once we don't have time for them, we'll get a written response after the event. Steve wants to know how your tool compares to SolarWinds. Good question, and, you know, we do have a lot of, uh, you know, people coming in and asking us that question. Um, I would say in terms of capabilities, um, you know, SolarWinds does a pretty good job at covering the various um, technology stacks. Uh, however, if you really look at their offering, it's not unified. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they have modules, you know, there's Orion that covers all your network products, but then you've literally got to buy add-on point tools that at last time we looked at them, some of them don't even look the same, so you can tell it's been a result of acquisition. For example, their Tech Tools product that has deep server metrics looks a little different, doesn't quite integrate. So I don't know how they deal with normalization of data across some of those tools. So, yeah, you can get the same capabilities at face value, and you'll pay about the same whether you buy SolarWinds or Uptime, but you're not getting a true unified monitoring platform. Got it. And one key thing I would, sorry, I, I, I forgot to answer on top of that was, realistically, you can't get deep SLA management with SolarWinds. And, and, and we've seen that. We know that that is an area where they do lack, and we've had lots of people choose uptime uh, when they need SLA management reporting. Got it. And here's one from Greg who wants to know whether uptime supports any monitoring that does not require that an OS-level agent be installed. Uh, yep, absolutely. We have a combination of both agent and agentless options, right? So um, in VMware environments, uh, we're able to gather all of our performance data through the uh, the vCenter interface, right? So using its native API, we can pull out the, the full range of metrics, uh, everything that vCenter can get, we can get. Um, a Windows environments, we do do uh, WMI-based collection as well. Um, and again, that, that uh, SNMP interface on both servers and network devices, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of agent or agentless. Uh, we've got a technology that covers pretty much everything. How about the toaster? No, just kidding, just kidding. The toaster is Well, it doesn't scuzzy, in fact, so. Um, <laughs> seriously, this one from Jason who says, does your product integrate with problem management applications or ticketing applications? I think we talked about that a little bit. You want to expand on that? Um, yeah, um, you know, again, it's it's really the ability to forward event uh, information and outage information from uptime to any other ticketing system, right? Mm -hmm. What you can also do is pull aspects of that ticketing system into the uptime UI. So I talked a little bit about that ability to add third-party information to the, the dashboards. Uh, a great example would be um, having uptime's, uh, let's say, availability dashboard highlighting outages, and then beside that, you can include information from the ticketing system to say, hey, here are the actual uh, tickets that are known about, and you can work with that ticketing ac application directly from the uptime user interface. Terrific. We're, we're just about out of time. Let me take one last question. Tracy wants to know, what about Oracle VM? How do you work with them? Uh, Oracle VM, we're, we're able to monitor the, the host OS as well as pull back any, uh, any of the application-specific metrics. For, for us, it's just another virtualization technology that we do monitoring for. And with that, we've just about run out of time. I want to thank our speakers today, David Didaskalou and David, uh, Phil Didaskalou and David Leith, uh, CEO and Senior Technical Product Manager, respectively, from Uptime Software for their great presentation and for so gamely answering all of the questions we threw at them. If uh, we didn't get to your question, we will try to get a written response to you as soon as possible. I uh, also want to thank uh, Uptime Software for sponsoring today's event. Now, if you'd like to, you can 
download any of the additional resources we have, the presentation, a link to uh, a free 30-day enterprise trial of Uptime, their white paper on the five new realities of server monitoring, or the ITSM vendor comparison checklist. If you joined us late or you'd like to share this presentation with a colleague, it has been recorded. It will be available in archives starting tomorrow, and you can find it by surfing over to eseminarslive.com. While you're there, look at our list of upcoming events for Ziff Davis Enterprise. This is Michael Krieger saying have a great day.